what's going on guys welcome back to this video today as you can see we're gonna talk about Connie Connie is an advanced persistent threat tool that has been used by North Korean hackers we're going to take a look at this uh, hack tool we're going to analyze this with any run okay now this is the description of Connie you can go to uh, Mitre framework to take a look at the description and the techniques and the tactics used. But most, more importantly, we want to dynamically analyze how this malware works. To be able to do that, instead of setting up a dedicated machine to dynamically analyze the malware, we're going to use a shortcut. We're going to use any run. So right off the bat, if you have an account in any run, you can just go ahead and click on a new task. And from here, you can upload the sample. Okay. Now, if you are on a pro plan, you can choose promote or switch the promote on. And from here, you can have more flexibility on the options. You can tweak what kind of <coughs> uh, tools that will be with the test operating system, the duration of the test, and other important parameters. Now, for me, I will go with the promote. Okay, since I have analyzed this before, I'm going to just click on the restart and it will bring up the same screen. So the first step, we want to upload the sample. Okay, after uploading the sample, you can see the sample uh, show up here along with the extension. Make sure to upload a sample that has an extension, whether it is zipped Okay, or a regular executable PDF document, whatever it is. Make sure to upload a sample that has an extension. Okay, now since I want to take my time in analyzing the malware, I'm going to tweak this option a little bit more. So instead of choosing maybe 10, by default it comes with 10 seconds, I guess. Now I'm going to choose maybe 660 seconds to the max. I can switch the network on. I want to see all the network connections made by the malware. And most importantly, I want to choose the operating system. So there are still some people or still users who still use Windows 7 or Windows 64. So you might want to analyze the sample and see how it runs on the Windows operating system. Now, I am more interested in analyzing this on Windows 11 because most people right now, most enterprises, they use Windows 11. And we also we can analyze this on Linux as well. So I chose Windows 11 64 bit. Okay, here I choose the packages and the hotfixes that come with the Windows operating system. So from here, with this option, pre installed soft set, I can choose all the tools, or I want just the Office tools, or I want clean installation of Windows. Just the basic. Uh, programs that get Windows up and running. Now, if you want to upload specific uh, files or programs you want to use into analysis, you can go to Tools Collection and upload your tool from here. Okay. Now, since I'm satisfied with the options, I'm going to choose Run Public Task. So before I run this task, I want to go back and choose the complete set. Okay. So I want all the programs to be running on the Windows OS. I'm going to go ahead and click on Run Public Task. Also, you can auto save the changes and you can save this as preset configuration. So next time you run the analysis, all the options will come, uh, you know, pre added. So we're going to now run public task. All right, now the VM is booting up and in less than seconds, it will be ready for the analysis. Okay, great. Now, look at this. This is the zipped file that we have uploaded. We're going to go here, right click and extract to desktop. We want to interact with this file. So we're gonna start the desktop, click on okay. The password is infected. Okay, the password is correct. So this file is here. We're gonna right click and extract the contents. Okay. Remember, this is a virtual machine, so there's not supposed to be any kind of protection in here. Okay. 
we're going to click on the directory and from here we can see two files okay one is a pdf file and another one is word document we're going to start with the pdf file all right so we see text definitely it is in north korean and we can see here the option to enable the editing before we start enable the editing we want to first take a look at how the file behaves before we enable the editing so we start with the network connections that we sample is making and we can see all the connections here are kind of they look like normal so they go to adobe these are all http requests to three files themes some configurations for the adobe to run scrolling all the way down okay all these connections seem normal we can wait more seconds to see if there are further connections that might uh, start you can go to connections from here and we can take a look at the ip addresses the port numbers and the process that is making the connection okay it's all the time more convenient to take a look at the domain name that the process is contacting okay rather than trying to find out if the process is suspicious or not because sometimes rootkits or malware inject themselves in system processes so you need more in-depth analysis to find out if this is a suspicious process or not but any run makes this simple it uh, performs preliminary analysis on these processes and based on the engine and couple uh, uh, entries in the database we can see that uh, it tells you that there is no problem with these entries they're all clean but nevertheless it doesn't harm if we take a deeper look on the domain names we see all the domain names look normal now we didn't click on enable editing because they click at the DNS requests They all look usual threats we have one threat categorized under miscellaneous activity you can take a look at this but most of the time this is not harmful all right now we take a look at the process dissection the process tree here shows all the parent processes and the child processes so like parent child relationships we see the main parent process winrar and under the winrar we see the other processes such as the acrobat under acrobat we see other child processes but nothing suspicious so far as far as i can see from here now if you click on enable editing we're going to give the document more freedom in doing all the api calls and other things that uh, makes the document fully functional so we're going to click on enable editing and we can also take a look at the behavior so take a look at the requests the connections HTTP requests there is no change here and also if you take a look at the processes also there is no any newly spawned processes so it's almost safe for the pdf file we can still mo do more in-depth analysis but we want to take a look now at the word document so we click on the word document all right so this is the word document and it looks like let's see here i don't understand north korean unfortunately but the most notable thing here is that there is no enable editing usually when there is a malicious microsoft office document delivered to you through email or to anything else when you open it um, there is enable editing option there would be that option to run the macros but here we don't see any which is very stealthy method by the way successfully doesn't attract attention okay now we take a look at the http request and we see a spike now it is 33 requests interesting we scroll down uh huh look at this we see these post requests but to where to this domain name okay we can take a look at the request by clicking on this button uh, 
and we see this is the requested URL the request type and this is domain name stocks okay interesting and this is the rate scrolling down the same post requests and they are all started by PowerShell so this is it I mean a word document doesn't need PowerShell to function so basically that that door document is spawning PowerShell and kind of you know doing post request to this domain name which probably represent a command and control center so it's all the same URL upload upload scrolling down we see other connections and also we see the same connections but to different URLs but this time it is a get request probably to retrieve uh, malwares or something so it's encoded with base 64 right okay so now this is the malicious sample and these are the HTTP requests it makes and these are the domain this is the domain name we we'll go to connections and see the IP addresses associated with each connection scrolling down to the same domain name so it doesn't show up here let's give another look yeah this one so this connection goes to this domain name okay uh, which is a Russian IP address probably this is the main uh, C2 server scrolling down and we see this another C2 server represented by this domain name and these are the IP addresses DNS requests we will see the same data here and we go to threats we see any run analysis on these domain names and these requests so flat out is telling you that this is a spyware and also we can see the name so clicking on this it is successful credential theft detected and the other one is network trojan was detected we can take a look at the details by double clicking on the alert Okay, so successful credential theft. Stream data. So look at these. You can spend some time decoding these uh, values, but these represent the OS information and the uh, credentials or the plain text credentials that the malware found on the system. It is uploading them through a post request Okay, to this upload script which in turn uploads them back to the C2 server and this is the HTTP request we analyzed earlier now we can take a look at the other alert network trojan was detected so we click on this and we see a description of the malware county apt malware appears to be targeting south korean users as of now the malware is delivered with hw files and ink files in a zipped archive and here are the references which we can take a look at and we can see the ids rule that triggered the alert okay now on the right we want to take a look at the process breakdown so as an analyst you want to find out what is the main process that caused all of this havoc so it is the command line and if we click on this we can see the partial yeah it's the partial command okay the full complete partial command that is actually uh, performing or stealing the OS information and the credential uh, the plain text credentials you can see all the other sub or child processes among them is the PowerShell which is executing further commands as shown here we can copy them and decode the commands for further analysis yep uh, 
Another interesting process is the expand, which is found under documents. So the expand process is another malware that is dropped by uh, the, the, the Word document when it is when what when, the, when it was running. And through PowerShell, it retrieved the um, uh, expand process from the same domain name through get requests, as you can see here. But they were labeled as not found as not found. Now, as an analyst, you want to extract indicators of compromise. So it's very easy to go here and click on IOCs, where you'll be able to find out all the needed information so you can add them to your current security defenses. You have the hashes, domain names, the IP addresses, but you have to do some filtering because you want to delete all or you want to block only the entries or the IOCs associated with the malicious activity. And now we can take a look also at the ATT and CK report. We want to see all of the tactics and techniques used by the attackers or this group. So you can see here the classification. We are interested in the dangers, which is actually uh, given red um, color. So it uses one technique from the persistence. It adds uh, an entry to the registry to start with the system every time it boots up and also privilege escalation and defense evasion by using obfuscation. So for every tactic, we can see the number of techniques that the malware used. All of this is useful uh, for the security analysis. And at the end, we can take a look at the report. So we can click on text report. And we can see the full analysis here. Now, even if you are on a free uh, plan on Enron, you can still get the report. And from the report, you can find the same information we have analyzed previously, along with the screenshots. Scrolling down, causes the processes, the registry keys that were modified. Of course, you can do your filtering by navigating through the entries from here. So first, do your analysis here, and then later on, export the report. You cannot do your analysis on the report. So start your analysis first here, and then at the end, when you want to document your analysis, you can generate a report to have everything stored in case you needed them later. So all of the things that you might need as an analyst, they will be uh, found in the report. Okay, so that was it guys. Give it a, give it a try and let me know in the comments.